In 19th century New England, a mysterious and deadly epidemic plagued the region, devastating families and communities. The illness, which gradually drained the life of its victims, left them hollow and lifeless. Desperate for a solution, communities turned to the occult when traditional medicine failed to provide answers. This desperation and belief in the supernatural gave rise to the New England vampire panic. Fast forwarding to 1990 in Griswold, Connecticut, a group of children playing near a gravel mine stumbled upon forgotten graves. One of the children informed his mother, who initially dismissed his claims until he showed her a skull they had unearthed. The police were called, suspecting the graves to be the work of a notorious murderer. However, it was soon discovered that the bones were over a century old. Archaeologist Mick Bellantoni investigated the case and uncovered a fascinating mystery. The graves belonged to a colonial-era cemetery, following the burial customs of the time. Most graves contained unadorned wooden coffins, with children being the predominant occupants. However, one particular burial, known as Burial No. 4, piqued Bellantoni's interest. The stone tomb revealed a decaying red coffin and rearranged skeletal remains, with the skull and thigh bones placed on top of the rib cage in a skull and crossbones motif. Further examination revealed that the skeleton had been decapitated years after death, with additional injuries to the ribs. The coffin, bearing the initials JB, had also been broken. Bellantoni sought the expertise of historians and archaeologists, hoping to unravel the mystery. One colleague mentioned the Jewett City Vampires, a phenomenon that occurred in a nearby town in 1854. In Jewett City, the townsfolk had exhumed bodies to allay fears of vampires. This connection intrigued Bellantoni, prompting him to contact folklore expert Michael Bell. Bell had extensively researched the New England vampire panic and confirmed that the Griswold grave was likely exhumed during the hysteria. The cemetery shared similarities with other vampire exhumations, such as its rural and agricultural location, as well as its proximity to Rhode Island, where suspected vampires were often unearthed. The eerie coincidence and common characteristics of the Griswold Cemetery and other vampire exhumations added credibility to the theory. The New England vampire panic, fueled by superstition and a lack of scientific explanation for the epidemic, had led communities to take matters into their own hands. They believed that the undead were draining the life from their loved ones, leading to the exhumation of graves in search of vampires. The case of burial number four in Griswold shed light on the historical vampire panic that gripped New England in the past. It highlighted the desperation and beliefs that prevailed during that time. While the vampire panic may seem irrational today, it offers a glimpse into the fears and actions of communities grappling with a devastating epidemic and searching for answers beyond the realm of science. By examining the historical context, analyzing the unusual burial practices, and considering the connections to the vampire panic, researchers like Bellantoni and Bell strive to understand the past and shed light on the beliefs and actions of our ancestors. These investigations serve as reminders of the intricate and often mysterious tapestry of human history. After an enlightening conversation with Bell and hearing the tales of manipulated corpses, the remains were subsequently returned to their original resting places in distorted conditions. Bell and Tony's thoughts then shifted back to JV, and the fractures in his ribs now seemed to make sense. According to Bell's research, it was possible that people believed JB to be a vampire, leading them to delve into his ribcage in an attempt to destroy his heart. Further examinations at the National Museum of Health and Medicine in Washington revealed a crucial detail that provided additional evidence of JB's suspected vampirism. It was determined that JB had suffered from tuberculosis, a prevalent lung disease during the New England vampire panic. At that time, Tuberculosis was erroneously associated with vampires, who were believed to spread the illness. Families, fearing the disease's devastating effects, would sometimes exhume the bodies of deceased relatives to identify potential vampires. Certain characteristics were considered indicative of vampirism. If a corpse appeared unexpectedly fresh upon exhumation, 
or if there was liquid blood in its internal organs, it was often deemed vampiric. To protect against these alleged creatures, families employed various methods, ranging from relatively harmless actions like turning over the remains in the graves to more extreme measures. In some cases, organs were burned and the ashes were ingested, while in others, the head was removed as an extra precaution. Although there is no evidence that such drastic measures ever proved effective, the superstition persisted. Historical records document several victims of the New England vampire panic. For example, Rachel Burton's body was exhumed in 1793 by her husband, Isaac, who hoped to save his second wife from the same fate. Another case occurred in New Ipswich, New Hampshire, around 1810, where a family predisposed to consumption exhumed a relative's body to remove the heart, which was then burned and consumed by the living family members. Not all individuals, however, were convinced by these superstitions. Dr. John Clough, in the Boston Medical and Surgical Journal of 1840, discussed the vampire superstition and his skepticism. He mentioned that ancient beliefs still influenced people, despite living in a relatively enlightened era. Samuel Saladay from Scioto County, Ohio, and his father were suspected of being vampires due to their tuberculosis-related deaths. Samuel's body was exhumed within two years of his passing in 1815, with his entrails burned in the presence of relatives and onlookers. Unfortunately, tuberculosis continued to afflict the Saladay family. The vampire panic was not limited to rural communities with less educated populations. Even affluent families, such as Frederick Ranson's family from South Woodstock, Vermont, exhumed his body and burned his heart after his death from consumption in 1817. In Exeter, Rhode Island, the story of Mercy Brown gained fame. Mercy, along with her mother, sister, and ailing brother, fell victim to consumption. Neighbors convinced Mercy's father, George, to exhume their bodies to determine if any of them were vampires. When Mercy's body was uncovered two months after her death, it showed minimal decomposition, fresh blood in her heart, and signs of movement in her grave. The townsfolk believed Mercy was responsible for her family's illnesses. In an attempt to break the family's curse, Mercy's heart was burned, and the ashes were mixed with water and given to her sick brother to drink. Unfortunately, these efforts proved futile, and her brother succumbed to consumption shortly thereafter. Today, vampires primarily exist as fictional characters in books, films, and TV shows. This transformation from objects of fear to sources of entertainment intrigues folklorist Bell. However, he acknowledges that the reality of vampire panics and their historical context is far more captivating than fictional depictions. In conclusion, the tales of vampire exhumations during the New England Vampire Panic reveal the superstitious beliefs and actions of communities grappling with the spread of tuberculosis. The fear of vampires as the cause of the disease led families to take extreme measures, exhuming and tampering with the bodies of their deceased loved ones. Despite the lack of evidence supporting the existence of vampires, these beliefs persisted and left a lasting mark on the region's history.